Okay, welcome back. We just finished uh, studies of uh, several chapters on phase transition, which are all described in my book. But uh, what I am trying to do here, take you through um, uh, several aspects and give you more of the physics and the physical picture. Many cases, like we did in Zelovich and or, or, or on the partition functions, and many other cases, uh, beat on the Landau theory. Uh, we did the did mathematics, but we will do now again some mathematics, but uh, that is not the really real aim, you know, because the details of mathematics you can get in my book, the, the statistical mechanics, the, uh, this book you can, uh, you can get it in uh, uh, the, all the chapters are there, though uh, what I am teaching not in the same chapter because I want to make it interesting, I want to make it engaging to students and I want to make it worthwhile for them, they should know why they are studying, you know. Uh, I do not believe that one should study because it is a course material, one, one must have some amount of enjoyment, I am not saying fully you have to be ecstatic and jump up and out, but you should have some amount of uh, involvement and some liking for the subject otherwise it will not stay with you and not only equations do not stay with you, but physical pictures will stay with you. Now, coming away, okay, so we were doing a Landau theory, phase transition, free energy functional, Landau free energy, wrote down the beautiful free energy functional that if uh, it uh, is F naught, which is eta equal to 0, then E dot half L eta, then B like that. And then since free energy has to be a minimum, then this uh, d f d t d eta has to be 0 at d, d f d, d eta at uh, has to be 0 at eta equal to 0 that immediately means this term disappears and then we are left with simpler things and that is f eta f naught plus b eta square plus c eta cube plus d eta 4 and then uh, this thing I can, uh, this thing I can uh, just remove for the time being and make this delta f. So, then I have b eta square and c eta cube and this is important temperature dependent term and for first order phase transition I need the asymmetry of metastability and hysteresis I need the c term. But for critical phenomena where I have a flat like that, then it becomes like that, I do not need this term. So, because of parity, because free energy must be same here and there and they are equally displaced from origin one is minus and the plus. So, no odd term can be there. So, then the free energy just it has square it of plus. So, this is sometimes called FIFO theory and very, very common in field theory uh, where these things are. So, this was the Landau, beautiful then one can go ahead and can get the entropy from here and one can get the, uh, I will do it again when I do the critical phenomena a little bit more, we can get the entropy from here, we can get the specific heat from here and the similar things, but that I will do a little bit more when I do critical phenomena. Right now I am doing the first order kind of phase transition uh, and uh, similar things which are more, more we like, we need it much more in physical chemistry and materials chemistry, uh, this, this nucleation and the uh, Ostwald step rule and similar things. Now. Uh, the, we also did, uh, to, but now many of the phase transitions uh, require the heterogeneity. So, there must be a homogeneous system must become heterogeneous because this we create a, uh, an embryo in a, uh, so there is heterogeneity, any fluctuations of the new phase is a heterogeneous fluctuation. So, there is a density fluctuation, gas liquids, when gas goes to liquid suddenly a hugely uh, more dense region comes and, but when in chemical engineers do the cavity bubble forms inside a liquid boiling liquid and uh, that is how it evaporates, then you suddenly have a very low density region in a dense region. So, this is heterogeneity because this den huge density change takes place at the surface as I go through, okay. So, now, so how do I describe that uh, heterogeneity? Landau theory cannot describe the heterogeneity, it has the macroscopic density in it. That is why Ginsburg-Landau comes in. Ginsburg-Landau now tells me, okay, 
if I have a uh, order parameter or density as a function of z, then the way to get the free energy is uh, you get the free energy as a function of okay, this let me uh, then a, a as a eta as a function of z. This this f is the this this f. This f is this Landau free energy. So this is Landau. However, when I create the heterogeneity, I have to describe that, and that is done by using a harmonic. And this is which allows me to vary order parameter like this that an order parameter in a gas liquid liquid solid interface or at nucleation, then this is called the famous Ginzburg Landau free energy function. In nucleation, in nucleation, what do we do? We said okay, I have something like that, and this is the new one, it has to increase from the old one, and then what do we do? We do Becker Doring, and this is goes over a barrier, comes like that. So, this is the nucleation uh, R star, we did it R and this delta G R, okay. That is delta G as a function of order parameter, this order parameter and but this is a function of R. So, one has to be uh, careful, okay. But now, I am going to, so we have done nucleation, we have done surface tension. I described how one uh, talks of surface tension because you create a surface a create a surface and then you go through the surface and creation of surface means you go through the uh, an interface and this region is neither here not here uh, surface tension always their equilibrium so free energy is the same so this region is rather in this unfavorable domain so since it has to go through there is no other option and one phase to other phase has to create this interface and creation of interface has to put matter in the free energy large free energy barrier. Now, the system tries to minimize the free energy and the way it minimizes the free energy it plays around with the profile. So, now you have to put in this thing that is what Ginsburg Landau does that there is a variation which cost you energy and there is the uh, uh, this uh, putting in the unfavorable which also cost you energy both costing you energy, but you have to minimize that and uh, and that gives you surface tension. So, that is why this is a statement you have always said that a, uh, in, why raindrops are spherical because it it, it, it uh, minimizes the surface, okay. And so, it is the same principle that is working there. So, now what you have done till now we are going from one minima to another minima. However, there is a large class of phenomena where something else happens like when a volcano erupts uh, and there is many, many nature, pattern in nature we see formation of patterns. They go through completely different setup and this is the phenomenon of spinodal decomposition. This is again is a very uh, famous and well known subject in phase transition and in material science you know because this is something always taught in materials. Metallurgy departments. So, here what happens? We consider the following thing we have a homogeneous phase at high temperature, homogeneous mixture of A and B, homogeneous high temperature. Now, we suddenly quench it. For example, say we have a temperature scale temperature just to 1. I want to quench it very far, I want to quench it to 0.1. And that happens, see when you take the volcanic rocks, you find that there are many of the volcanic rocks have beautiful pattern, okay. Many of the patterns are because of this iron bearing uh, uh, salt uh, and you find the stripes, same stripes you find in zebra, you find the same stripes many, many places in nature. And the reason is that these are non-equilibrium processes. So, now I suddenly quench it, but what happened at low temperature, low temperature this is not homogeneous. Low temperature A and B phase separated. So, A is 
uh, is with A and B is with B. Like you can do aluminium and manganese. Uh, and that alloy, it's, 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 a, uh, it's, a, uh, it's a homogeneous mixture high temperature. Quench it. It defends separate. Now, these are happening, maybe happening all in solid state. So, in high temperature, they are disordered. But when you go to low temperature, they separate. However, I do it suddenly. So, then suddenly the system finds, system finds that it is put in this region. So, this is a free energy and this is the maybe composition which is the order parameter here. So, it is so defined that the composition is 0 when they are homogeneous. So, you can say it is x a minus x b is the composition order parameter 50 50 mixture. So, completely mixed. So, minimum here is where this quantity difference is 0 and is there harmonic as we are discussing again and again fluctuations are harmonic in the first order because simply because the first derivative is 0 because it has to be minimum with respect to free energy. Free energy must be minimum with respect to fluctuation. That is the thing. The first term goes to 0. So, first term this the real the relevant term comes this harmonic term that means delta x square ok. Then delta x cube could be there, but for small fluctuation delta x cube is also not important because delta x cube is small. So, the initial it is always harmonic like that ok. Now, they are low temperature they are phase separated. So, they are just like the coexistence I have been drawing whole morning or uh, uh, previous lectures. So, this is A phase and this is B phase they are phase separated. So, A and B are phase separated. And indeed, now when I quench something like that, this very interesting thing going to happen. The system now has to go into this phase and is to go into this phase. However, it is a homogeneous system. At, at high temperature, they are homogeneous. A and B are mixed with each other. Now, I am suddenly telling them to phase separate and it starts to phase separate, but there is no nucleation. There is a mass bulk phase separation, but phase separation in a which it was it finds it was in free energy surface like the upper free energy surface it then suddenly finds in lower free energy surface but mass is conserved i cannot just destroy one a particle in place and uh, replace it by a b particle similarly i cannot take a b particle from here and put it in an a particle i cannot do that number is conserved so i must do it in a progressive fashion moving around how do they move in such a dense thing, they move by diffusion. That's the only thing. The mass movement. So, however, this is a very strange diffusion. Diffusion usually diffusion makes diffusion makes inhomogeneous inhomogeneous system homogeneous. That is what diffusion is. Actually, diffusion is very closely connected with entropy. There is a relation between diffusion and entropy. There are actually several relations. Diffusion increases, entropy increases. So, diffusion favors entropy. So, you have a inhomogeneous system which has lower entropy, then diffusion makes them homogeneous. That because entropy increases. This is very easily understandable, uh, very pictorial and very uh, although profound, but very simple to understand. However, now we are in a different situation. We are now in a homogeneous system. That homogeneous system has to become inhomogeneous, but with the diffusion. So, this that is why this is sometimes called spinodal decomposition is called affil, affil diffusion. Let me give you some example now. The, uh, because we are talking a lot. So, this is an example of computer generated spinal decomposition and the evolution of structure through dynamics. So, at a high temperature A and B, I, I made one um, A may be white, B may be black. So, the black and white, white is just empty uh, and blacks are these small squares. So, here is near almost 50 percent, 50 percent and then I suddenly quench it, then it starts to phase separate. 
it is different from nucleation you can see is a large scale large scale large amplitude phase separation scenario so now it goes intermediate you can see in a nascent of uh, uh, phase separation how does it do now a likes a now a wants to be with a that's the free, what the free energy dictates it b wants to be with b that's what free energy dictates it so now the nearby black ones they start forming chains and white ones they form chains so you start seeing the initial pattern formation then they move around more and blacks form and but they, they they have to avoid each other and in the process they form this beautiful pattern which is called a uh, spinoral pattern and this is what one sees in many 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 cases in nature in the metallurgy in uh, in physics chemistry uh, in, in in any kind of things and in also in basic theory goes over almost to the animal world a very similar equations that we are going to use that is used so so the formation of this pattern and that can be ex experimentally studied through x ray and the x ray will be excess scattering will pick pick out this pattern formation will pick out the emergence of the length scale and this length scale then shows as a peak in the x ray uh, structure factor there are many many things like that these are multi uh, strong uh, stronger attraction between similar space component that a like a like say b like say then homogeneous mixture high temperature entropy dominates but suddenly coins to low temperature it is enthalpy that is driving force and in non equilibrium condition sudden temperature drop etc phase separation mechanism is different from nucleation and growth what we studied uh, in the last lecture also there is a nucleation or uh, uh, yeah before uh, last two lectures nucleation and growth now it is different but it is nevertheless is a very well known of phase separation and so there is the showing that the volcano uh, the volcanic rocks that form and when the volcano takes place then after that it's just go out and suddenly finds itself from something like 5000 degree centigrade or something like that to room temperature you know uh, to it 0 degree centigrade for for the for 5 degree centigrade and then these beautiful patterns in that form because a, a volcanic melt has many different components uh, ferrous sulfate sulfide is one of them and some zinc and other things are there and they like to be among themselves and so that is beautiful so you can imagine always that here out of a homogeneous state we are getting an inhomogeneous state so you immediately one thing that comes to your mind okay so this is the free energy minimum okay two free energy minimum but i have to separate them out so the diffusion yes but there is also surface tension will play an important role because i have to create the surface there was no surface before now there is a surface so again so so surface is being created and many many surface being created okay so surface tension going to play a very important role so system tries to avoid formation of surface but in this case there is no way but the, you can uh, you can imagine what will happen in the low high, uh, 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 very long time these patterns will become thicker and thicker so slowly some islands will disappear like this island here this will disappear they will go into here and there and then then next this island will disappear this island will disappear so there will be thickening or called coarsening ultimately in a very long time there will be phase separation just like one a one b but that may take a very long time that's why even volcanic rocks formed a million years before we still have the patterns and so this uh, evolution takes place uh, uh, in time dependent and we'll briefly discuss them how to uh, understand that okay so this is what i just said the sudden temperature quench then a and b and uh, this t much greater than homogeneous things then a plus b here and then then we can also say that very important phase diagram in a binary mixture is a very common phase diagram you study in your undergraduate physical chemistry that if an a and b then homogeneous phase where a plus b are here and then it is like gas liquid 
then this is a phase a turn a co the boundary and then inside you remember the lever rule and all these things then the phase separate like that but there is you can quench if you quench it usually you see only this one but if you quench it then you get this is the, the spinoral line and um, that it forms somewhere I will see the somewhere here it forms and then there is an unstable region that we will we will discuss little bit now ok. Uh, so, important thing of spinal decomposition is very important in absence of an activation barrier it is controlled by diffusion uh, it, uh, it is all through it is very important it occurs through all through the bulb it is not unlike nucleation which occurs in a, a local region. So, it is a that is what we call is large amplitude uh, phenomena it is almost everywhere in the system it is happening system is falling out of equilibrium and falling out of equilibrium in a really dramatic fashion. Then free energy gradient, but it is it is driven by free energy gradient, but resisted by diffusion. Uh, so, many many system this thing is seen. I am repeating here, but I just show you the one of the computer simulation results that you know is a binary mixture, two spaces A and B, blue and red, and then you quench it and then in the long term and the quench it and then you remove some vibration then you find this beautiful pattern. So, these guys are connected one and blue is connected below that like that. So, it is just like the pattern I showed you that they form this beautiful pattern intertwined in a beautiful way and this is a pattern formation in a spinoral decomposition. So, uh, this is again the same thing different stages of pattern formation uh, we showed here. So, now let us do the theory little bit of theory I will do not to a great deal, but some amount of understanding which evolve again these are nothing but based on Landau theory and the very similar kind of thing we did Becker Doring thing. But now the in Becker Doring although we have to go up now we are coming down so free energy and all these beautiful things happening. The one of the reason that I like to do this uh, spinal decomposition and nucleation because this is take you to a deeper understanding, but they at the same time without too much difficult uh, uh, calculations, but at the same time it is a beautiful, uh, beautiful uh, physical insight that a student gets and it is something which is a uh, as I told you this is the same thing used in a very large number of cases and very very nice ok. So, enough of that now let us see it is not fun I am going to do a little bit of make equations as I said it is nothing but Landau again. So, I am now in the initially at time t equal to 0 I am here I from here I have dropped here I have dropped the red one is the guy I have dropped. Now, that thing now is going to going to go into this direction and is going to go this direction and I want to do the evolution ok. Now, uh, so uh, let me start with the free energy at the in, uh, this is C naught this is my C naught. Now, I want to say ok I want a small fluctuation in composition around this region. So, I write F C naught plus delta C by this small fluctuation with a little bit on this direction or little bit on that direction any of the direction I have chosen them from symmetric. So, it does not matter. So, now I expand it in a Landau expansion the Taylor expansion F C naught F dot C naught this then half delta F dot C. So, it is a second derivative that comes in and already as I have described many times this is derivative first derivative well it is C naught here that thing is maximum. So, this term goes to 0 and I again take to uh, this part to here and call it delta f this quantity is delta f and then I have only this term left on the right hand side. So, this is my simple equation. So, if I do a small fluctuation now this is a maximum. So, if second derivative this quantity is negative f double is less than 0 
then I am coming down. So, there are two region in this region I a small fluctuation decreases free energy, but if I ultimately reach here then small any small fluctuation increases energy. So, here small fluctuations increases the energy free energy here small fluctuation decreases free energy. So, it goes through a uh, double prime greater than 0 which is the um, condition of the minimum less than 0. So, in between there somewhere it must be 0. So, somewhere here f double prime c must be equal to 0. So, this time where the f double prime c changes sign from negative to positive is an inflection point. This is the point which is called the spinodal point. That is where the character nature of force coming from free energy on the system changes and this is the called spinodal line is a fairly well known terminology we use. But in the in the in the level of free energy it is described in terms of second derivative of free energy and the function of the composition ok. So, uh, when we did nucleation we went up like that and now in the spinodal decomposition we are coming down from the free energy landscape. How how a simple free energy landscape is used introduced by Landau it, it describes such huge phenomena and that is why in physics community uh, in, and condensed matter uh, science in general these kind of pictures are so, so admired because they give us we, we invest so little and we get back so much in, in, in return.